Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'd like to show you the features of the brain, the parts and features of the brain. This is our human brain model from the lab. And first, I'll go over the features that you see from the outside without it opened up at all, and then we'll go through some of the features in a sagittal section and then other features. Um, starting with the lobes, the brain has five lobes on each side. Up in front is the frontal lobe, and it reaches back to this gyrus. So up here is frontal. Behind the frontal we have parietal, and then behind that we have occipital, way in the back. Temporal is over here on the side. So if I go, th oh, the last one is between the temporal and the parietal, and it's called the insula. If I open up the brain in this way inside there, you can see the insula. The best way to see the insula is to take off, on this model, to take off this top part. And there's the insula there. So when I show it on a lab exam, I usually remove all the parts except for the, the brain stem and the insula. And I put the sticker right here so you know that's, that's insula. And just in case the cerebellum's not there, again, this is insula. You know, each side has five lobes. Um, and there are ten total. So we've got, if, there's the front of the brain. There's the left frontal lobe and the right frontal lobe. The left temporal lobe and the right temporal lobe. The left parietal lobe and the right parietal lobe the left occipital lobe and the right occipital lobe. And then inside we have the left insula and on the other side the right insula. And those are all of the lobes. Nerves. On the bottom here is this long nerve. This is cranial nerve number one or the olfactory nerve. And for this side, it would be the right olfactory nerve, and this side, it's the left olfactory nerve. Right behind it is the optical nerve, cranial nerve number two. Optical nerve, and this would be the left optical nerve, and this would be the right optical nerve. Right behind it is the pituitary gland. And underneath the pituitary gland, you can see where the two optic nerves cross and that's the optic chiasm. Behind the pituitary are the mammillary bodies. Then moving further down this big bulge right here is the pons. It contains areas for control of breathing. And then below that we have the medulla oblongata also contains uh, respiratory centers and some other criti critical function areas like controlling blood pressure. This big thing back here is the cerebellum. And I talked about lobes already. These are the lobes of the cerebrum. Mm. This whole big thing on top is the cerebrum. I think I've pretty much exhausted what I want you to know for if, if I just had the big brain sitting out there by itself. Let's open it up for a sagittal section and we're going to look at the left half of the brain. Again, cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve. So this would be left olfactory nerve, this would be left optic nerve. In the sagittal section, the optic chiasm is here, right above the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland has this white thing connecting it to the brain, and that's called the infundibulum. Mammillary body is here.
Um, the next thing on the list of objectives is the ventricles. In order to show all of the ventricles, I have to take this top piece off. Because this is the left half of the brain, this opening here is the left lateral ventricle. And if I open up the other side of the brain and put them back together, the front of the brain is that way, so this is the left side. This is left lateral ventricle, and this is right lateral ventricle. You should also be able to recognize it if these two top parts are together. So that, again, is the front. But because it's upside down like this, this is the right side. So this is the right lateral ventricle, and this is the left lateral ventricle. So we've got the lateral ventricles taken care of. I'll go back to my left side sagittal section and put it all the way back together. So we got lateral ventricles. In here is the third ventricle. And the fourth ventricle is down here in front of the cerebellum. Those are all the ventricles. Um, in the sagittal section, this whole area here is the cerebrum cerebrum. The cerebrum has these convolutions in it. The valleys are called sulci. That's the plural version of it. Um, an individual one would be sulcus. And then gyrus are the hills between the valleys. Plural is gyri. Longitudinal fissure. I forgot to show you the fissures when I was when I had the brain all together. And I need to grab a piece of paper because I want to show you how I show them for lab exams. Okay. For a lab exam, I'll put a piece of paper into this fissure that separates the left and right hemisphere of the cerebrum. And there'll be a number on here for whichever question it is. And then the question should say, what is this paper stuck in? And it's stuck inside of the sagittal fissure or the longitudinal fissure. You can use either sagittal or longitudinal. And then back here between the cerebrum and the cerebellum is the transverse fissure. And again, I would put a piece of paper in there, as I mentioned earlier. So transverse fissure is back here. And longitudinal fissure, longitudinal fissure, or sagittal fissure, is here. The cerebral lobes we already went over, but one more time: right frontal, right parietal, right occipital, right temporal, right insula. And for the left side, it's all the same, just left. The corpus callosum, again, sagittal section. The corpus callosum is this big whitish area up here. And the corpus callosum's job is to connect the right and left hemispheres of the brain. The thalamus is in this region here. And the interthalamic adhesion is the little brown dot in the center of it. The interthalamic adhesion connects the left side of the thalamus with the right side of the thalamus. Notice that if the sticker is in this neighborhood, there's three things that could be being asked for. Could be asking for the thalamus, we could be asking for the interthalamic adhesion, or we could be asking for the third ventricle, which is also in here. So make sure you read the question. Um, if I want interthalamic adhesion, I'll ask for the feature. And I'll have a little arrow on the sticker that points right to that little brown dot. If I just have the sticker here and usually covering that little brown dot, and I ask what part of the brain this is, that's thalamus. If I want you to tell me which ventricle, then I'll actually ask you which ventricle is this. 
from the thalamus. The hypothalamus is down here. And to help you landmark, it's just above the pituitary infundibulum, hypothalamus. The epithalamus is a region. It's above and posterior to the thalamus. It's this region up here. And it contains the pineal gland and the choroid plexus, which is the pink part here. So if I point back here to this neighborhood, I'm looking for pineal gland. And if I point to this big pink thing, then I want the choroid plexus. The midbrain is here. It surrounds this canal. The pons is here. And again, from the front, it's this bulge. So that again is pons. And again, that's pons. And below it, we have the medulla oblongata. And then, of course, this big thing back here is the cerebellum, very important for muscle coordination. And the whitish stuff that you see in here is the arbor vitae. And those are all of the major features that you need to know for at least my lab exam for the brain model. Any questions, as always, please feel free to call, email, contact me. And thank you very much for watching.